Hi, this is Muhammad Barakat. Welcome to my blog site. During the defined step of a Six Sigma project, the project team needs to identify the problem or the opportunity that the project is intended to solve. Usually there would be more than one potential problem that can be addressed in a Six Sigma project. However, not all of them would have significant improvement. So the project team needs to filter out those problems that if resolved will result in a huge improvement and positive impa impact on the bottom line. And this is what Pareto analysis is actually used for. Well, let's first know what a Pareto principle is about. Pareto principle or what's known as the 80-20 rule states that 20% of problem categories will present 80% of improvement. For example, in a package delivery service company, the Six Sigma team wants to initiate a project to improve the level of customer satisfaction. So they started by analyzing customer complaints that the company received over uh, say a period of one year. The complaints are then categorized into areas of problems. Then count or number of occurrences uh, for each category is recorded in the count column. Although this is an important step, but it's not sufficient to know which category has a significant effect on customer satisfaction. Well, you may wonder and say, why don't the team target all categories at once and get a 100% customer satisfaction? Unfortunately, this is difficult and impractical in real world. Limited resources and time constraints play a great role in selecting problems to solve. Add to that the return on investment might not be feasible as you don't want to invest $50,000 to get a benefit of $10,000 in return. So you have to select what is known as the vital few and leave the trivial many. Okay, well, to figure out what problem categories are actually vital few ones, we will create a Pareto chart as you can see, which is a bar graph with bars of various lengths depending on their frequency or sometimes the uh, dollar amounts. The bars are sorted in descending order from longest to shortest or from most significant to least significant. In this example, from the secondary vertical axis on the right hand side of the chart, you can pinpoint the categories that, uh, that contribute to a specific percentage or share of the overall problem. For example, the first three categories which are damaged package, wrong billing details, and missing pieces. These collectively contribute to around 80% or 77% of the overall problem. So they are the potential vital few problems that can be targeted in a Six Sigma project. Okay. Going back to our data, to create this chart, let's first sort the categories by count from largest to smallest. Okay. Then we calculate the share or contribution of each category to the total count of complaints. This is done by dividing each category's count by the total count of complaints. 
before applying this formula to the rest of categories notice that you need to fix the reference cell of the total amount by hitting the F4 button okay we apply this formula to the rest and we get the share of each category to the total count of the complaints well let's add a new column that will help us find those vital few problems I'll call it the cumulative share which is actually summing up categories shares top-down so the cumulative share for the first category would be the same the cumulative share for the second category will be its own share plus the previous one's share and so on we apply this formula to all categories and we get the cumulative share as we move downwards notice that the the last cumulative share should be 100 percent because it is the total contribution well now we are ready to create the predator chart select any cell outside the table then go to the insert tab and under charts hit the arrow of the column option and select the first chart which is the clustered column now we need to define the x and y axes or the, vert the horizontal and vertical axes of the chart so from the design tab hit the select data option in this dialog box we need to define the series which is the values to be presented on the y-axis or the vertical axis of the chart hit the add button the first series that we need to define is the values of the count so the name of this series would be the header of the column and then we defy the, define the values of the count as the first series to be presented on the vertical axis of the, of the chart hit OK this is automatically reflected as you can see here in the chart and by this you actually have created the Pareto chart as an option you may need to add a cumulative line to show how categories contribute to the overall problem from left to right so you can add another series of the cumulative share let's add it now series name is the cumulative share the values are cumulative share values and OK before closing this dialog box we need to show the categories in the X axis or the horizontal axis by adding them on the right hand side of the box so hit edit and select the complaint category values as labels to be shown on the horizontal axis of the chart ok as you can see here the both the count and the cumulative share use the same vertical axis values so we need to do two things here first we need to plot the cumulative share on a separate 
or secondary vertical axis to be more visible the other thing to do is we need to change the cumulative shear plot from bar chart to line chart so to do that click on the legend click again to select the cumulative shear title right click and select change series chart type we select the line type and we select the first type of the line chart okay the other thing to do is to plot this cumulative line on a secondary axis again right click and select format data series and from series options select the secondary axis okay to make the you, you can make actually the um, the values on this line visible by right clicking the the line then selecting add data labels so you can see each value on the line for each category or each cumulative point actually okay you have now created a Pareto chart with cumulative line when the project team reaches this point of analysis it will be easy for it to select the vital few problems which are the first three categories that contribute to around 77 or 80 percent of the overall count of complaints these problems are probably uh, worth the effort to be solved for the best return on investment and customer satisfaction well I hope this video made it easy for you to construct a Pareto diagram using Microsoft Office Excel in addition to proving the benefit of using Pareto principle in the defined phase of a Six Sigma project. Thank you for listening and see you in next videos.